Hello my friends and welcome back to our continued blind let's play Ace Attorney Apollo Justice Remastered for the PS5. My name is The Fightless Bird, this is your story based gaming channel, and today... Well today we try to figure out what happened seven years ago. And so far... It's not looking good for a certain magician. But the problem is... The problem is... That... Even if he's guilty, he wasn't found guilty because he wasn't arrested. So what actually happened to allow a murder to happen, and yet the guilty party doesn't get arrested? Unless... Unless the case was thrown out due to some forged evidence, perhaps? I don't know. Only one way to figure out, though. Let's go ahead and jump into it, shall we? I hope you're all having a wonderfully fantastic day today. Order, order, order! Well, this is all rather suited. Objection! <laughs> but have I done the prosecutor Gavin? I owe the court an apology. Sorry. Sorry for what? You see, I was unaware that two of these unique pistols were crafted. The analysis of the rifle marks only proved the type of gun that fired them. Objection! But, but that's not what you told me before. Or told us before. You said you'd verified the murder weapon. Which, which is why I'm apologizing to you now, quite sincerely, I might add. Uh, would you hold me accountable for a mistake made in my youth? But you're still young. That was just as <laughs> Yes, indeed. That was just this morning. I am still young. And, I might add, it wasn't really my fault. If the defendant had only admitted he took one pistol from the scene of the crime, they would not be having this pleasant discussion now. All the dots. Hmm, valent grammary. Yes, your honor. You were a prison to this court as a decisive uh, witness. But you've proven to be more divisive than decisive. Ooh, nice wordplay, sir, Judge. Objection! You'll see in time. Huh? The testimony so far has merely been a review of the fox. The proof comes next. Can you elaborate, pr Prosecutor Gavin? When Mr. Valent entered the hospital room, the victim had already been shot. As his next testimony will prove her right, the veal fight is about to begin. Bring it. Very well, the witness will now testify to the court. Help us determine your shit what. Who shot what? A lot of the music. I arrived in the hospital room at the appointed time, which is to say 11.20 p.m. After discovering the body, I fulfilled my obligation, then called in the doctor. The doctor examined the body before the police arrived. He was quite clear about the time of death, 11.10 p.m. And the only one in the room at that time was my partner, not me. Okay, yeah, that, that, that's, um, really. Really, 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 because I'm pretty sure this is 11 to 11 30. I see, I remember this. I'm, 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 I'm trying to, uh, to remember things better. As you get older, you forget things a lot easier than you were when you're younger, that's for sure. But I remember specifically seeing 11 to 11 30. Hmm, those things are, uh, Rather close, you have to admit. You're talking about an alibi established over a matter of minutes. You use a 10 minute discrepancy as a basis of your alibi. It's easy to explain in this situation, Herr Judge. For example, 
Take our debut hit single, 13 Years Hard Time for Love. Cue to the song, press the play button, and it will play for 2 minutes and 15 seconds. Do it 100 times, the result is the same. The debut single was only 2 minutes and 15 seconds long? What a ripoff! <laughs> Magic is a world of utmost precision, hocus pocus, vicars, and admirable focus. And in the time of death, determined by the doctor, there's an inconvertible truth. Very well. Prosecution warns us that we're dealing with rather precise times. And we can expect a cross examination to require the same level of precision. I would hope the defense refrains from its customarily broad, sweeping accusations. Let's very blur the focus this case so clearly demands. Point taken. Easter's remarks will result in a penalty. Carry on, Mr. Wright. Carry on my way. Oh, yeah, right. But that, that time seems very specific, and the autopsy clearly says 11 to 11.30. For me, that's a clear contradiction. I arrived in the hospital room at the appointed time, which is, say, 11.20 p.m. 11.20 p.m. Can you prove that's when you arrived? Alas, such a feat may be beyond the great violent. But there was no one in that room but Magnify, and he was departed after a fashion. I have here defendant Zach Remedy sworn the position. I stuck into his room that night at the appointed time. It was 10 minutes before I left the room, and the victim was still alive. Time indicated by this letter, Zach, was 11.05 p.m. Exactly. Which means the witness could not have entered that room before 11.15. Because his partner was still in the middle of his crime. I see someone did the arithmetic homework. You see, the defendant himself has corroborated the witness's testimony. Hmm. Does that all make sense? Sure, that's not a problem. I don't see any problem with that testimony. If you say so, let's continue, shall we? Sometimes, the most magical thing of all is the truth. After discovering the body, I fulfilled my obligation and called the doctor. You walk in on a murder, and the first thing you do is shoot the clown? The disciple does what the disciple must. My mentor's request, without reason, had caused me a circuit, a surfeit, a I've never heard that word before. A surfi? Surfeit? What is surfe? Uh, an excessive amount of something. So, um, had caused a surfe of sorrow. An excessive amount of sorrow. Oh, okay, very cool. I've never heard that word before. Uh, does it have, hold on, hold on, I'm interested by this word. It's pronounced serfe? Serfe? Surfit. It's pronounced surfit. Uh, let's see. It's archaic. No. Um, the connection to facier is fairly obvious word spelled with big back and feck, such as sacrifice, bene benefaction, and infect. For words like stupefy, um, it's the Anglo-French noun surfet, excess. However, that Middle English part officially is selling on the spelling surf surfe, the, the way you have it now. How's it pronounced? Surfet. Surfet. So it comes from the French. Cool. Sorry, I, I just always like to Look up things when I see things like that. Who would I, Valent, be now without him? May the soul of Magnify the Grey find greater peace above. This I muttered to myself as I pulled the lonely trigger. In any case, I believe this is nothing more than what we have already learned. I'm still waiting for what one of those white moments, Herr Attorney. May I remind that basic marks will earn a penalty. See with that in mind. Yes, your honor. What a pain this is turning out to be. The doctor examined the body before the police arrived. Did the doctor say anything concerning the cause of death? 
Why, yes. I believe he screamed. My God, he's been shot in the head. <laughs> it doesn't take a doctor to know that. Probably would have screamed the same thing. And I would have penned the vecadium that arose in my soul at that horrid sight. Whatever happened to good old fashioned investigation? In any case, I believe this is nothing more than what we have already learned. Right, right, right. Okay, okay, go. Yes, yes, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Come on, come on. It was quite clear about the time of death. 11 10 p.m. I don't think I'm stepping out of a limb to say I have some doubts about this. How could the doctor be so precise with the time? We do usually only get an estimated time of death, true. I'm not sure I've heard of a verified time of death. Magic reveals in making the complex appear simple, but the reality is quite the opposite. What appears complex in this case is a simple matter of subtraction. I see another person's done the arithmetic homework. <laughs> The point here is the IV the victim was taking. It's quite visible in the photograph of the scene. Recall what we heard earlier about the victim magnified grandmother's schedule. Every night at 11, Magnify took an IV did it for 30 minutes. I can see the IV bag right there, yes. Why is it in his arm though? Now, look a little closer. Follow the tube down from the bag to the end. Ah, uh, the needle's been removed. Yeah, I know, I've been saying that too. Doubtlessly, it fell out when he was shot. Well, that would seem to be the case. When the needle comes out, the IV no longer dips. Ah, you could just measure the remaining IV liquid. Precisely. The IV liquid functions for our purposes as an hourglass of sorts. This is how the doctor determined the time of death. From the amount of remaining in the bog, it was determined that the IV had stopped 10 minutes after the administration began. Our IV report approximately 10 minutes had passed as IV began. And so it was when I, Valent, entered the room. Ten minutes have passed since that horrible crime was committed. And this is proof. Hmm, well, Mr. Wright. Hmm, did that seem important? It does, but... I wanna... I, I wanna do the, uh, the last line first. It's the truth. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, come on, come on. And the one in that room at the time was my partner, not me! You entered the hospital room at 11.20 p.m. The time given by the defendant, Zach Grammary, was 11.05 p.m. You didn't run into him at the hospital that night. Hmm. This is why I never perform with amateurs, you see. Uh-huh. Picture, if you will, the nighttime hospital. Outside, only the pale of the moon. And two dressed as we would be in such circumstances. I dare say that would ruin the mood completely. Hmm? The mood isn't in question here. I believe the witness is saying that it meet, ya. Yeah. For what is magic, and not the study of beauty? A speeding was not only out of the question, it was an impossibility. For what is magic, and not the study, had to make absolutely no sense at all. That said, was there a contradiction in there? I don't see a problem with testimony. At least not now. I, I, I still wonder about the, uh, about the report. The time of death. Yeah, I mean, even Phoenix says this is where we should be focused at. How could the doctor be so possessed with time? Yeah, okay. Why is this going so slow? I mean, this is something we've already seen. 
and yet it's still going by like extremely slow. But we know all this. Yes, it could measure mean IV. Yes, 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 we got that. Uh, Dr. T term the diamond death. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes, uh, did that seem important? Absolutely. Very important. Well, seeing how it is the biggest skill we have, it's the time of death. I say it's very important. Hmm, agreed. It would be hard to imagine a more precise way to determine the time. Behold, the power of arithmetic. <laughs> very well. A witness will add this detail to the testimony. Sometimes. Yes, the truth. Got it, got it, got it, got it. The water of life springs out eternal. The remaining IV liquid proves my innocence. Did you notice the IV yourself by any chance? When first I entered that room, the stench of gunpowder assailed me. Next, the mark of death upon my mentor's forehead. And then, his left arm did I spy, a rose dropping and wilted. Its thorn, the discarded IV noodle. Knocked from the vein by the force of his shot. Luckily for you. If that IV had not been there, why, you might be a suspect. Indubitably so. I might say it sinks my lucky color. Your lucky color? Indeed. Even today, I will proudly pull my suspected tail. What always, without fail, brings me luck. Why, when Zack and Valent won the first Magician Grand Prix, Yes, the very one held by the Association of International Magicians. I was adorning this entire tube, and our trophy a buzz. Ah, what a day it was. Uh, this is one trip down memory lane no one needs. My lucky color, yes, indeed, and the IV too. I say, I think it was you, especially for me, Valet. Hmm, that does seem to be the case, indeed. Well, Mr. Wright, any thoughts this testimony? Valet sure looks happy with himself. Okay, how about this lucky color testimony? Um, that's different. I don't think the lucky color matters. What I think. Now, there's a couple ways I could try doing this. But here's a problem I have. If you look at this picture, that needle is all the way in the top right with a bandage around it. His arm is way down there. How the heck was that needle in his body? Like, at all? That, to me, is a contradiction. The other contradiction is the estimated time of death. We have 11 to 11.30, not 11.10. So, how in the world... Oh! Even more contradicting. It's been washed and shows no sign of use. Exactly. There's no way the needle could have been in his arm from that picture. But more importantly, we have a syringe that clearly says it hasn't been used. Oh, I'm I'm so glad I I'm so glad I reread the uh, the, uh, the the evidence here. Okay, so color has nothing to do with this. So which one do I uh, press on? The remaining IV liquid. Press on this one. Objection! That didn't work. Why did that not work? And maybe this one? Right, I just chose that one. Objection! What the heck, game? Ah! Like, I know what to say, I just don't know how to say it. Which is what's driving me crazy. Objection! 
Show the picture? <laughs> Why is it not working? Many mm -hmm. IV Prisma Innocence. I mean. Why the hospital? Pointed time. 11.20. Call the doctor. Doctor examined the body. The police arrived. Quite clear about the time of death, 11.10. Maybe, maybe you gotta press the, um... Maybe you gotta use this here. Objection! Are you kidding me? Ha <laughs> ha. Well, we just created a paradox. We failed, um, we failed seven years ago in the past. Yep, we, we failed it. We failed seven years in the past. That, that's the thing that happened. Well, that's enough. No need to further belong this trial. Fence case is sufficient to overturn the prosecutor's claim. Court finds the defendant, the Shady Enigma. Defendant will now surrender himself to the court's care. He'll undergo a regular trial in the high court within a, a month's time. Court is adjourned. We try. Obviously, I'm missing something. Obviously, I'm missing something. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I I'm not saying wrong. Because I don't think I am. But at the same time, there's, there's something else I'm missing. So it's either one of these two options, right? And you notice why the amount of IV liquid left. Indeed. Apparently, doctors the buzz magician have a few tricks up the sleeves. Impact caused the needle to drop. Just complete pull. There has to be a hole in this somewhere. Heck, I'll take a pinprick. Okay, this one. Did you notice the IV yourself by any chance? My first time I remember this such gunpowder sailed me. The mark of death. His left arm despised, dropping and witted. I just caught an IV needle. Now from the vein of the shot. Might have been a suspect. I might say it's thanks to my lucky color. Indeed, even today I wear proudly upon my suspect itself. Always without failings of luck. Yes, the very one held. I was doing in this attire too. Trophy of bust, what a day that was. My lucky color, yes, not IV too. I say I think it was huge, especially from Whoa, 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 wait a second. What did you just say? Uh, history, history. My lucky color, yes, indeed, and that IV, too. I misread that. I thought he was talking about his clothes. He's not talking about his clothes. He's talking about the IV liquid. The IV is blue. Or green. It's in a blue bag, but it's green. It's not yellow. Why would that matter? Why would it matter what color the IV liquid is? I don't care, it's it's a contradiction. He said the IV was yellow. The IV is not yellow, the IV is green. That's a contradiction. I don't know what that means, but it's a contradiction. Uh, yeah, it looks happy, okay. Um. Contradiction. It certainly looks like your lucky colors brought you plenty of luck. But not this time. Mr. Valent, your lucky colors betrayed you. I'm afraid you've lost me. Your Honor. The witness's testimony just now clearly contradicts the evidence. What? 
Please recall my warning at the beginning of this cross examination, Mr. Wright. Baseless accusations will be duly penalized. I do hope this latest accusation is well based. Don't worry, I've got all your bases right here. All your bases belong to us. Very well, let's hear the defense's claim. Where is the evidence that contradicts what Mr. Valentine has told you? It's the picture itself. It's not yellow. The crime scene tells all, Your Honor. You see, I'm telling you, uh, it, it's... I, this has happened to me before where I like get stuck on something and then I fail. And then after failing, I say, okay, let me take a step back. Let me re-examine like all the lines. I've done that many times before. And sometimes it helps. And sometimes you just go, I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> That's happened before. There's been quite a few times in the history of Ace Attorney where I said, hey, I need a hint in the description box in the comment section below because I have no idea what to do next. Oh, I'm glad this is not that time considering we're only at 26 minutes or so. The crime scene tells all, Your Honor. The photo of the crime scene? Oh, this talk of color has me yearning for black and white clear cut simplicity. Tell us, Herr White. Just where is the contradiction in this photo? My pleasure. And I assure you, it is quite simple. But I can't promise anything in black and white. Instead, we'll promise it green and yellow. Let's hear what Mr. Ray has to say. One, this photo contradicts the witness testimony. I should have known that too, because there's so many times in Ace Attorney history where an adjective was important. Like the color of something or, you know, something like that. It's like whenever there's an adjective, you know something's going to come up. The back. Valent Cramery. Let's get one thing straight about your lucky color. It's yellow, yes? Ah, yes indeed. And we know from this picture that that is not yellow. Nope, nope, nope. Definitely not yellow. Kind of takes to Mr. Atavid, but yes. Something wrong with yellow, Mr. Wright? Well, yes, there is. Decisively wrong, in fact. Taking a look at the photo of the crime scene. Oh, what's this? Confusion, doubt, tell us what your other eyes spy. Even my elder eyes can see a problem here, Mr. Valent. Well, look at that IV bag. Ack! What is this? What foul magic? <laughs> it would be hard to call the IV liquid yellow. And I'm afraid no magic was involved in the taking of this photograph. Amazing. Order, order, order. What does this mean? Objection. This, this is some kind of mistake. Well, what does it mean? I mean, you can always say he just got the color wrong. Or was he never there? Was he never there? He never showed up and he's just pretending to? But no, he called in the doctor and the doctor was there. So he, he saw him. But so what? He got the color wrong. Yes, let's go to Gavin. Your witness is a mistake. <sighs> the greener they are, the harder they fall. I suppose there's no substitute for experience. Valent Grimmery, as you reminded us several times, your lucky color is yellow, but the IV is clearly not. Well... This contradiction can mean only one thing. Objection! Should never overshare in court. And to think you almost had me. Huh? I see your two colors now, Ace Attorney Phoenix White. Uh, somebody like to tell us, Prosecutor Gavin? So as this court can tell, the witness's testimony does indeed contradict the evidence. Ah, oh, ha ha, yes, a contradiction. 
one that I shall be pleased to hand right back to Mr. White. How do you mean? How? Because the witness has made no mistakes. I agree at a glance, I the liquid does appear so the greenish yellow. But I assure you, the liquid itself is quite yellow. Yellow liquid? How can you say that? Yeah, that's, uh-huh. So as I can tell some for this photo, it's uh, quite green. Yes, but what color is Ivy Bog itself? Does green and blue make yellow? I'm, I'm not an artsy guy, I don't know. The bag? You mean the plastic bag on the hook? Hmm, it looks like a, uh, I wanna see light blue. Precisely, figured it out yet. Put a yellow liquid in a blue bog and you get green. This, incidentally, is the liquid it's to color. I see. The explanation does add the ring of truth to it. Objection! What? As I thought. There is no substitute for experience, Prosecutor Gavin. But, you may tell a good tale. But, you just proven something rather grave for you, that is. Good Eve. The liquid in the ivy is yellow, yes. But how did the witness know that? <sighs> it's quite unnatural when you think about it. You did think about it, didn't you? Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Your Honor, the defense requests an explanation from the witness. At the scene of the crime, the ivy liquid appears to be green. So let me ask, how did the witness know the ivy liquid is actually yellow? Order, order, order. Mr. Wright, you will explain this at once. The witness clearly knows the color of the ivy liquid. So I'm sure it means something, but what? I can think of only one possibility, Your Honor. The witness, Valent Grammary, has testified that the ivy liquid was yellow because... Uh, uh, well, it's not the top one. Because it doesn't look yellow. He had to have seen it before. The only thing I know is it's not the top one. So we'll just go with this one. If it's right, great. If it's not, we know the third one's right. And if that's not it, well then we're just, well, it's a typical flight list, but. <laughs> You've seen it before. From the facts before us, the answer is clear. The witness knew that the IV liquid was yellow. Why? Because he's seen it before. But not inside the blue bag we see in the photo. You saw the liquid by itself in a clear, colorless bag. Huh? I suppose you would have had to, but I'm still not sure clear what this all means. I'm not either. Ask yourself, why would he know if he didn't work at a hospital? That's where you'll find your meaning, Your Honor. Objection! I'm afraid I find nothing. So what if he knew the ivy liquid's color? Need to getting excited over absolutely nothing to our teeny bopper fans, yeah? Objection! The ivy liquid is the only evidence proving the time of death. A 30 minute hourglass with 20 minutes worth of sand remaining. Your claim, Prosecutor Gavin. I remember it well. However, there's a critical difference between an hourglass and an IV bag. Oh, wait, I know. An hourglass is the same, but an IV bag is liquid. Okay, well that's true, but I don't think that's what we're getting at. I'm right, right? Hmm. As much as it pains me to say this, Your Honor, no. Unlike the sands for an hourglass, IV liquid enters a patient's body. At which point, like magic, it disappears. However, what if the amount of IV liquid had increased? You couldn't tell, could you? After all, there's no way of knowing how much went in. Objection! Let me get this straight, Headite. 
You're saying the witness rotted down the victim's IV, Bog. Not with water, but with IV liquid. That's how you knew the IV liquid was yellow. No, no wait, wait, I said wait! How am I to never tour such a myself as aid to perform such a task? Objection! I'm an amateur too, but I can pour water into a cup. Objection! I'm afraid there's quite a difference between a cup and an IV bag, quite. Can you prove our witness is capable of such a fate? Hmm, he has a point, amateurs. I at least would have some difficulty pouring IV liquid into that bag. You don't need to be an expert to see the look on the witness's face. He added liquid to the IV to throw off the time of death. I tire of these fiery towels locking evidence. Will Mr. Wright any solid evidence to bring us back down to Earth? Valid Grammary, I'm afraid your magic would serve you well in a life of crime. What do you ask? What are you strongly suggesting? Magic relies on pops, and pops become evidence. Our witness was certainly able to increase the amount of IV liquid in the bag. All he had to do was work a little magic, and the pop was... This? Because it's been washed? Haha! -ha. Back! The victim's swinge! It's the perfect pop for the magically increasing IV trick. And easy enough for an amateur to use. Objection! What kind of evidence is that? The syringe was clean, not a trace of liquid in it. Objection! Mm, and don't you find that odd, Prosecutor Gavin? What? The victim had the syringe to administer his insulin shots. There should have been traces of insulin left inside. <sighs> well, Valent Cramery, as you point out yourself, the ivy liquid makes the perfect clock. One that you can manipulate at will. I do believe well with this being his first. Well, that the murder in this trial has been a bit too much to bear for Prosecutor Gavin. <sighs> I'm afraid that while there is no doubt, there's a doubt to the amount of the IV liquid in that bag. The time of death cannot be proven. And that brings our trial to close for today. Well, maybe I could squeeze in an extra day out of this. I could do a little much needed investigative work. You see, there are no objections. Court is adjourned. <laughs> Truly, there is no substitute for experience. Nothing blinds one to the two so effectively. Huh? A word to the wise. Underestimate the young and they'll sweep your feet from out under you. In a way you never ever expected. You see, I know exactly what you're thinking. Huh? What's he talking about? You say the witness used the syringe to manipulate the level of the IV liquid. But there's no proof. There's no proof he didn't do it either. Yes, quite too. Huh? He's admitting it? Nor was this witness quite as decisive as I hoped. This, I admit, at all, violating in the past when the future holds so much. You have something in mind, Prosecutor Gavin? Proof, Herr Judge. I have another way to prove my case. With evidence, no less. What's this? This is the victim, Magnified Gremity's diary. Diary? I had to go into the house. Oh my god, that's how it happened. That's how it happened. That's how it happened.
It seems today's clock will make me wait a little longer. At least only less than 10 swift minutes remain. To all those that supported me on life's work, I give thanks. Farewell. I bet you anything, we're going to use this evidence in the trial to prove the journal wrong. And it's going to come out that this evidence right here was forged. And we unknowingly use forged piece of evidence in the trial. And there the trap is sprung. I don't think the trap was sprung purposely on us. Maybe it was. It's hard to tell. But this right here I think is what's going to doom us. After going into the hospital, Magnify began biting his members, it seems. The story of his birth is suddenly debut and of a meeting his disciples. It seems he intended for the last chapter to end quite appropriately with his death. Wait, that book doesn't say what the reason was, does it? The reason why his disciples couldn't review his last request? Sadly, it does not. But supported here is on the last page. Apparently, the victim wrote in his journal that night. Even after the IV had begun at 11 o'clock p.m. Let's read it, shall we? Tonight's IV is in. Maybe the last. I'll leave the rest to them. The first should come soon. The journal may end here, or it may go on, but not long. That depends on his hand. All that's left to mine is to lay down this pen. It seems Fate's clock will make me wait a little longer. At least only less than 10 minutes remain. So basically, what this is saying is the first guy did not kill him. So he wrote in his journal that, hey, I need to wait longer, but only more, 10 more minutes. But this evidence is forged. I see how this works. Hmm, <clears throat> this doesn't appear to have been written just for his death. Court acceptance and evidence. Magnify his diary, a memoir of sorts, written up to just before he died. V, the last part, with particular car. This journal may end here or may go on, but not long. That depends on his hand. Of course, by his. He refers to a defendant, Zach and V. Well, that would make sense, yes. He was the first scheduled visitor at the room. Well, look at what he said before that. This journal may end here, or it may go on. It may go on. Magnify Karama V intended to fight again. That is, Isaac Karama V didn't pull the trigger. Huh. I see the defense understands the meaning of this. The victim's diary does not go on. It ends. Because Magnify's life was brought to an end by the defendant Zach Grandma V. Well, it doesn't, I mean, there's a page written now, but what does the real page say? Well, the real page, please stand up, please stand up, please stand up. Order, 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 Prosecutor Gavin. Are you certain that Magnify Grandma V wrote this? There is no mistake in his handwriting. Well, this does seem to be significant. According to this, Magnify did intend to continue his diary. Yet, if his diary ended here, which plainly it did. Then, the one who pulled the trigger was the first visitor, Zach Grandma V. Well, how do you like me now, Havite? Still too green for your taste, hmm? Ah. <sighs> He's right about the diary being pretty clear. Still, I find it hard to believe. That he'd overlook such an obvious problem with this precious evidence. Well, Mr. Wright, the witness's testimony we heard was lack. But put together with this evidence, it seems quite sufficient for a case. If the diary is accepted like this, the trial's over. Hmm, maybe it's time for me to show them something. I'm left with no choice but to show my own evidence. What? You have some evidence that returns this diary? Hmm. It's not too late to rethink this and avoid more embarrassment. Very well, please show us the evidence, Mr. Wright. Incidentally, don't even think I've shown this to Star V, I just shown the court. Huh? 
Now that we've come this far, I'll be asked something a little more decisive. Show us evidence of his victim continue fighting his daily. Alright, I'd be happy to. There's such evidence proving that the diary appears to end. Oh god. Oh, it's a trap! But was it a purposeful trap? First, take a look at this diary. Note that a page has clearly been ripped out. What's this? I hadn't noticed it at all. That's why we're still here talking about this. As it just so happens, I have here what I believe to be the missing page. I like I don't believe it! Look at this page. It's hard to imagine that the first visitor that night shot magnified Grammarie. That's the defense's position. Wait, let me see that. What is Sam Hill? Why, this is the uh, continuation of the victim's diary. Note the torn edge of the page. It's the perfect match with the torn remains of the last page in Magnify's diary. Quite remarkable! Would you care to explain what all this means, Herr Attorney? The diary continued after his first visitor came, which means that the victim was still alive after Zach Grammary left, leaving no one to take his life but the second visitor. Valent Grammary. No! No! The handwriting, too, matches that on the other pages. This is without a doubt the genuine article. Order, order, order. But, but wait, this is, that's impossible! That old man could have written that! It's a very long pause. Finally. You just couldn't resist, could you, Harvite? Resist what? Presenting solid evidence? <sighs> Here, Judge. Yes, Prosecutor Gavin? My dad declares they put the current cost examination on hold. The prosecution would like to call a new witness. Really? But, but Prosecutor Gavin, we're gonna call the doctor or something? This evidence of returns to current witnesses. I ask only to put it on hold. Please, my new witness has a very, very important piece of testimony to give. Five minutes, no more. I promise, Your Honor. Well, if you put it that way. Mr. Wright, what's your take on this? Uh, well, Your Honor, judging from his enthusiasm, we'll have to hear this new testimony sooner or later anyway. So it might as well be sooner. Well then, though this is highly, highly irregular, we will put the current cross-examination hold. The witness may step down. Now, Prosecutor Gavin, please bring the surprise witness to the courtroom. I had a bad feeling just then. That ripped out page was too obvious. He must have known. And I should have known it was a bad sign all around. He knows the forger? Hmm, only trial with no evidence is the first, even for me, Prosecutor Gavin. I beg the court's understanding. But I had to make a judiciary deal with the witness to secure his testimony. A judiciary deal? The details of his testimony may have some legal ramifications, shall we say. I thought it best to contain the information to this room. Hmm, very well. And you are the witness, I gather? Oh, yes, 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 sir. State your name and equation for the vet guard. Oh, my name is Joe Mesham. 
I'm a painter. Hey, painter, you are somehow related to this case? No, well, not per se. I have one simple question for this witness. Huh? Mr. Mr. Mishim, was it? Do you know what that this is? Oh, yeah. I know it well. How is that possible? Have you seen this diary page somewhere before? Oh, yeah. I mean, I made it. You what? You made it? Oh, yes. You might call it one of my works. Well, technically, you didn't make it. You doddered it. The prosecutor's office received a tip off yesterday. Illegal evidence has been prepared for the trial of Zach Gamma V. How did you know that? Who tipped you off? Illegal evidence? I initiated an investigation and found this witness. A painter to the world at large. Dude Misham has another side, you might say. He is skilled in making perfect reproductions of certain things. But this is only the first time it's ever happened. Forgeries and other words. For forgeries? Well, so we are to understand that this page here is... A fight prepared by a certain defense attorney. Objection! Hold it. I didn't prepare this evidence. Objection! Ah, the attorney speaks. Something about this purge, I presume. But what is he saying? It makes no sense. After all, it was you who represented this evidence to us, Phoenix Vite. Witness, uh, Mr. Mission, was it? Who requested this forgery? Who was your client? Oh, well, what? I don't know. What? Well, most of my clients prefer to remain anonymous. Leave it to me. I make the items I want and receive my permit. Well, that's the extent of my contact with them. Objection! But, but, there's no proof this is a fake. Well, it's a fake. Huh? To avoid just this sort of problem, I always put a special mark on my works. I can say without a doubt, this is mine. Rude. Mr. Wright, you had just presented legal evidence in court. My court! It was careless of me. That's all I can say. Oh, oh boy! Um, uh, here! Love this music. What's this? I don't know. I just got it over there in the hall. They told me to give it to the old boy in the blue suit with the spiky hair. They said it was really important. It was all a trap. A fatal trap. Mr. Wright? Yes? Do you have an explanation for yourself? If I did, would the court hear it? <clears throat> Probably not. Forging evidence is a serious crime, and presenting it in court is a serious mistake. Fatal mistake for an attorney. Fatal too, perhaps, for your client, I fear. Huh? Tell me, what kind of defendant relies on forged evidence? The answer is quite clear. A guilty one. Objection! Your Honor, wait. I understand that presenting forged evidence in court is a serious crime, but you cannot hold my client responsible for actions I undertook as an individual. Mm, I am sorry, Mr. Wright. Your Honor? Another close call, I dare say. If the prosecutor's office hadn't received that hot tip, everything would have gone the way you wanted it to, y'all. Huh? I even gave you a chance. Too bad you decided not to think before embarrassing yourself. 
I see no need for further discussion of matters. Special witness dismissed. So who set the hot tip? Who set us up? Oh, Mr. Attorney? Yes? Could I uh, ask your name? Huh? Phoenix Wright. Well, Mr. Wright, I have seen a certain many people, but none like you. I'll remember you, Mr. Wright. Though I deeply regret having to declare a verdict in this way, this trial is over. <sighs> you have the right to find a new attorney and make an appeal. However, this court must. Ah, your honor. Yes, Mr. Zack. There is one thing I wish to make clear. Today, in this courtroom, you cannot declare me guilty. You said that before. It is impossible. Yeah, you said that before. I'm afraid the defendant is quite mistaken. I must certainly have the authority to clear a verdict on you. Except, tell me, how do you plan on announcing your verdict? When your defendant does not exist. Doesn't exist? What are you talking about? I am talking about this. Whoa! But Mr. Enigma! The defendant subscribed. Find him quick. Bailiff, close all exits from this building now. Where the heck did he go? On the devil, he must not be allowed to escape. He like pulled a Batman and like threw a smoke grenade, except there was no smoke bomb. That day in that courtroom, a miracle occurred. The defendant, Shady Enigma, aka Zach Grimmery, did not just escape from court. He literally, unbelievably, just vanished. Right before the bailiff's eyes. No one ever saw him again. Not since that day. That is the Grimmery miracle! Ha 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 ha! No verdict was declared. After all, the defendant didn't exist. That's how it happened. The trial of magician Zach Grammary vanished, along with him for all eternity. The mysteries that remained behind were all solved, however, but not until seven years later. Alright, we're going back to the future now? Man, this case is crazy. So who set us up? I mean, that's obviously what happened, right? Someone set us up, but who? Alright, my friends. Well, I love you all so very much. Y'all have a wonderful, fantastic, amazing, awesome day. And I will talk to you again very soon. Until next time, so long. And take care. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to comment on what you saw and what you'd like to see next. I always love to hear your thoughts. But before we go, please remember that you matter, and you are brilliant, and you are loved, and you should always be true to yourself. Never let the world tell you any different. Much love to you from your friendly, feathered, flightless bird.